You're a neat freak. How do you scrub up against the grime fighters of the natural world? As we count down the top 10 most extreme cleaners in the animal kingdom, we'll discover some very different attitudes to personal hygiene. You'll be swept off your feet when cleaning is taken to the most extreme. Earth is a planet of extremes. Extreme places and extreme animals. But some animals are more extreme than others. Join us as we count down to find the most unusual, the most extraordinary, the most extreme. All around the world, people and animals have developed different cleaning techniques. While some cleaners can be truly obsessive, our countdown begins with a creature that's a little forgetful. In fact, it has the world's worst attitude to personal hygiene. The forests of Central and South America are home to a cleaner that's so lazy it's named after one of the seven deadly sins. Meet the sloth. It's number 10 in the countdown because it's the world's least efficient cleaner. Scientists have observed that after a particularly long sleep of say 18 hours, it might wake up and have a bit of a scratch often for less than a minute. No wonder it has the world's dirtiest fur. In the dry season, its shaggy outer coat is brown. But when the rains come, single-celled algae start growing in tiny grooves along each hair and turn its fur green. And since the fur is seldom cleaned, it's home to all kinds of other creatures. One scientist discovered more than 980 scarab beetles on a single slot. Another individual carried more than 120 moths, which all had a disturbing interest in the sloth's bathroom habits. Once a week, the sloth goes to the toilet. The moths are interested in the droppings because they're great food for their babies. Riding on the sloth means that the female moths are ready to fly into action when their host finally goes about its business. However, there's a good reason why the sloth is the least fastidious cleaner in the countdown. When you move this slowly, your best method of avoiding predators is to become invisible. And turning your fur green is certainly excellent camouflage. One scientist has even suggested that the algae in the fur may provide nutrition or a particular trace element, since sloths without algae don't survive long in captivity. And sloths are not the only ones to have found a great excuse to get filthy. Take one inflatable mountain, add chocolate sauce and lots of whipped cream, and you have the ingredients to find the dirtiest kid in America. The 12 finalists, called the Dirty Dozen, competed in a Wild West obstacle course including a ketchup-covered gold rush and a bungee-bucking bronco that tossed kids into chocolate pudding.
The aim was to get as dirty as possible because the winner took home $500, a family holiday package, and a year's supply of laundry detergent. But no amount of soap will get rid of the ingrained stains in the dirty fur of a sloth, even when it's washed in the world's biggest bath. During the rainy season, the rising rivers flood the forest. This is the time when a sloth goes for a swim, whether it wants to or not. Luckily, the sloth is a surprisingly good swimmer and moves faster in the water than it ever could on land. However, a quick dip in the river does little to change the sloth's appalling personal hygiene. It's a shame it doesn't meet some of the cleaners coming up in the countdown. They're such neat freaks that they'd need just a few minutes to have even the sloth looking spick and span. Nobody likes sharing their breakfast with our next contender, the fly. It may seem like a strange animal to have in a countdown of extreme cleaners, since it's infamous for making a mess, especially when it's eating. Imagine if we feasted like a fly. If we were like a fly, we wouldn't have taste buds on our tongue. We'd have to sample food with a different part of our anatomy. We'd have to stomp on our food because our taste buds would be on our toes. And since flies have no teeth, we could only eat a liquid lunch, which is why we'd have to vomit all over it. Enzymes in the digestive juices break down the food so that then we could suck it back up. No wonder we don't like flies on our food. But despite their terrible table manners, flies are actually conscientious cleaners. They're constantly scrubbing their body using hairy brushes on their legs. Since they taste with their toes, they don't want the remains of their lunch still clinging to their feet when they could be standing on their dinner. And those magnificently complex eyes have no lids so flies are constantly rubbing their eyes to keep them clean. The trouble is, when they have a good clean, they can dislodge all kinds of unsavory things. Flies can carry over a hundred different diseases, including typhoid and dysentery. No wonder we don't like them crawling all over our kitchen. We like to think that we keep our cooking areas nice and clean. And yet, a recent study into American household hygiene found that the kitchen was the dirtiest room in the house. And the biggest culprit wasn't the fly, but the very thing we use to try and keep our kitchens clean, the dishcloth. Because cloths and sponges are usually damp and rarely washed, the fabric makes an ideal breeding ground for bacteria. In fact, Kitchen cloths are the single dirtiest item in the whole house. They're far filthier than anything found in the bathroom. And what's even scarier is that your toilet seat has 400 times less bacteria growing on it than your computer workstation.
so perhaps we'd be better advised to spend less time worrying about the fly's filthy habits and more time disinfecting our keyboards. Our last two contenders had strange personal hygiene, but as the countdown continues, we'll see that some animals try to tidy up their act when they mop the floor with their feet. And later, why would anyone pay thousands of dollars to take a bath in fish eggs? It's amazing the things you can do with mud. In Aurora, Colorado, more than 3,000 people use it as a volleyball court. While these guys are getting down and dirty to raise money for child health awareness, the next contender in our countdown of extreme cleaners has found another use for mud. It's the pig. Pigs love mud. And while we think it's disgustingly dirty, mud solves a big problem for a pig. Unlike other domesticated animals, pigs can't reach their entire body for licking and grooming. Instead, they cover themselves in mud. That's because when they get out and the mud dries, they can rub the mud pack off, which cleans their hair and skin and carries away any external parasites. While some humans also use mud packs for their skin, the world's most extravagant beauty therapy can be found at London's St. Olga Spa. It's home to a traditional Russian herbal treatment where people bathe not in mud, but caviar. Once the fish eggs are mixed with avocado and a variety of oils, they're placed in a nice warm bath. Caviar is said to contain protein and nutrients for your skin, but it doesn't come cheap. A 20-minute soak will set you back over $7,000, although the price does include a nice pair of diamond earrings. While there's no caviar on the menu in the kitchen of Connie Precious, this is a luxury resort for 18 very clean pigs. They're such neat freaks that it's been no trouble to turn Connie's house into a pigsty. All of our pigs, <laughs> uh, you know, that live in the house, they're all potty trained. They let you know when they have to go. Pigs aren't the dirty, greedy animals that people think they are. Pigs are number eight in the countdown because they're surprisingly clean animals, despite their filthy reputation. And yet things could be worse. While the pig's name is Mud, the name of our next contender is Poo. So far we've seen that pigs can be clean and that flies always preen. And still to come, what six-legged sanitation workers have a ball when they play with dung? And later, imagine how clean your house would be if you hired a cleaner not with two arms, but eight. Oh, show me a home where the buffalo roam, and I'll show you a house full of bovine droppings. Every day in Africa, 
More than 5,000 tons of excrement are dropped by the vast herds grazing on the savanna. Dinner is served for the extreme cleaner crawling into number seven in the countdown. Africa is home to over 2,000 different species of dung beetle. These are nature's very own pooper scoopers. They can smell fresh excrement from more than a kilometer away. Competition for dung is tough. Researchers observed that a pile of elephant manure weighing more than a kilogram attracted 16,000 dung beetles. And it only took them two hours to clean up the whole pile. Dung beetles are number seven in the countdown because it's been estimated that they bury nearly one ton of dung per hectare per year. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. And there's huge advantages for a beetle that buries dung. Underground, your food ball is hidden from other beetles. And it's a safe place to bring up your babies. For an animal that lives and eats excrement, the dung beetle can be surprisingly clean. A female will stay with her grubs for two months, regularly cleaning them with antiseptic saliva and removing feces, fungi, and bacteria. No wonder people turn to the dung beetle to clean up a really big mess. In Australia, there were no big grazing mammals until 1788, when the first English colonists brought with them five cows, two bulls, a couple of horses, and 44 sheep. Unfortunately, they forgot to bring some dung beetles. As Australia's cow population grew to 30 million, over 360 million cow pats were deposited every day. That's a quarter of a million pats per minute. The pile threatened to bury the continent. And then in 1967, they imported the first of more than 50 species of dung beetles from Africa and Europe. Almost immediately, Australia's poo problem disappeared. Even in town, there are animals that make messes. And that's why dung beetles are becoming city slickers, as Catherine McCanch from Pollution Solutions explains. This little dung beetle is a perfect example of something that initially we might think is quite disgusting with their dietary habit. But if you think about the benefits they offer to the community, we really can't afford to be without them. It really is nature's solution to a huge problem that the world has with animal pollution. One of the beetle's biggest fans is city councillor Terry Ann Pert. We introduced uh, 40,000 dung beetles on the 31st of October 1995 and they're working brilliantly. They've spread from the areas that we've introduced them to to uh, households. People now tell me that they have dung beetles working in their backyards. So they've been a godsend to us. They have provided us with the perfect solution. They are really mir little miracle workers. They have absolutely no bad points and everything they do enhances the environment. Luckily for the planet, dung beetles specialize in burying all kinds of animal droppings. Dung beetles are found on every continent except Antarctica and have been busily cleaning for a very long time. Recent research has revealed that 80 million years ago, dung beetles were busy burying the droppings of dinosaurs. This long history of dedicated cleaning is why dung beetles are number seven in the countdown. 
In fact, these six-legged sanitation workers are so efficient, they could rival the show's most extreme cleaners. If it wasn't for the fact that no matter which way you look at it, there's something undeniably dirty about an animal that eats and lives in poo. All mammals spend a lot of time keeping their fur coats nice and clean. But even the king of the jungle has some places where his tongue just can't reach. And that's prime real estate for ticks and other blood-sucking parasites. That's when you need to call on the services of a specialist cleaner. Flying in to number six in the countdown is Africa's very own feather duster, the oxpecker. These relatives of the starling peck at ticks on the bodies of more than just oxen. Of the two species, the yellow-billed oxpecker prefers thinner-haired animals like the buffalo and rhinoceros, while the red-billed oxpecker seem to like mammals with thick fur, like the giraffe and antelope. They cling on with large, strong claws and use their flattened beaks to comb the hairs for ticks. Lots of ticks. A single oxpecker can eat 400 ticks a day. That's about 150,000 in its lifetime. The oxpecker is number six in the countdown because not only does it clean up other animals' parasite problems, but it also acts as a hairdresser. In the breeding season, the oxpecker has another reason to comb the fur of big mammals. It collects loose hairs to take back to its nest in hollow trees or caves. That's because the chicks are raised in the comfort of their very own fur-lined nest. A life of constant cleaning provides the oxpecker with food and a warm home. But for some people, too much cleaning can be a real problem. Are you pathologically afraid of dirt or contamination? Do you have to wipe surfaces after someone's touched them? If ritualized cleaning behaviors have taken over your life, you may have obsessive compulsive disorder. Doctors still don't know the cause of this mental illness. But it's thought that in America alone, more than three million people are affected. And the most famous of them all was an aviation pioneer and movie mogul. Howard Hughes was a millionaire of many talents, but he was also a man obsessed by germs. By the summer of 1958, his phobias had driven him into seclusion at the Beverly Hills Hotel. There, he spent much of his time sitting in a portion of his living room he called the germ-free zone. And unlike most obsessive compulsives who carry out rituals by themselves, Hughes was so wealthy he could delegate compulsive behavior to his employees. Among other things, servants were sometimes required to use more than 15 tissues before turning doorknobs. And objects like spoons had to be wrapped in tissue paper and then sealed in cellophane. Just like Howard Hughes, the oxpecker also seems to be taking its cleaning habits too far. Sometimes, instead of eating ticks, they pick at scabs, enlarging the wound so that they can drink the blood directly. Recent research suggests that the predominant source of energy for the birds is not bugs, but blood. So by feeding on wounds, they can get the food without having to clean the animal. And that's why the oxpecker is only number six in the countdown. While our last two contenders have made a meal of cleaning up the environment, coming up, We'll meet a man who had to fall into nuclear waste 
before he could clean up society. And later, how'd you like to wash windows that are 90 meters above the ground? Sometimes people deliberately make a mess on the seafloor. But nobody's going to have to clean up this ship. It's been scuttled to form an artificial reef. And it doesn't take long for new life to start growing all over it. Come back a few months later and it's easy to see that the ocean is full of creatures looking to colonize new surfaces. That poses a problem for the next contender in our countdown of most extreme cleaners. Just like a shipwreck, it spends a long time sitting in the sea and attracts unwelcome visitors. It lives in tropical waters where there are all kinds of dirty hitchhikers looking for a free ride. And unfortunately, the animal at number five in the countdown doesn't have a single limb to clean them off. That's why the yellow-bellied sea snake has come up with a remarkable way of keeping clean. It ties itself in knots. It looks bizarre, but by rubbing scales against each other, the snake can dislodge even the most persistent parasites. Humans need a different way of keeping their skin clean. Just like the sea snake, the surface of our body can also be the perfect breeding ground for microscopic life forms. Every day, all kinds of spores and bugs land on our skin. In the right conditions, these could flourish to cause nasty infections. So, to get rid of them, we get rid of our skin. Clusters of dead skin cells are constantly flaking off our body, carrying hitchhikers with them. You shed more than a million dead skin cells every hour. That's why 70% of household dust is actually just dead skin cells. So next time you're cleaning the house, just remember that you're wiping up tiny dead bits of your friends and family. And while the yellow-bellied sea snake doesn't have to worry about dusting, to keep clean, it does have to get knotted. Perhaps it could get some advice from our next contender, which has come up with some awesome chemical cleansers. Take a camera into any bathroom and you're likely to find our next contender. Splashing in to number four in the countdown is the sponge. It's a strange animal that's a long way from home. You can find more than 15,000 different kinds of sponges living at the bottom of the world's oceans. They're the simplest of all animals being little more than a group of individual cells that get together to pump water through their body so they can filter out particles of food. While they have no muscles or internal organs, some sponges can build themselves delicate skeletons of calcium carbonate or silicon. 
Try using one of these sponges in the shower and you'd rip your skin off. Instead, we collect bath sponges that build their skeletons out of a rubbery material that's much easier on the skin. Since sponges have a rigid skeleton, they can't move, which means they face the same problem as the sea snake. It's just that these guys can't tie themselves in knots to scrape off dirty parasites. Instead, they keep themselves clean with chemicals. When scientists analyzed samples taken from sponges, they discovered that they contain a cocktail of fascinating compounds. It seems that when sponges filter seawater, they also collect toxic chemicals excreted by other plants and animals. The sponges modify these chemicals and turn them into highly toxic cleaning compounds. Each variety of sponge has come up with its very own disinfectants and antibacterial products to keep themselves nice and clean. Researchers from the Scripps Institution of Oceanography have discovered that sponges could be the medicine chest of the future. It seems that some of the chemicals found in sponges can also help clean up human bodies. Perhaps a sponge contains a drug that will one day fight cancer or treat arthritis or Alzheimer's disease. While sponges have kept their disinfectants to themselves for 500 million years, our next contender has started spraying its cleaning solution all over the place. So far we've seen sterilized sponges and sanitized snakes. But can they compete with technology that's so clean, it's out of this world? And later, what bug makes its very own underarm deodorant that's like a mixture of bleach and penicillin? In 1985, Hollywood told the story of a tormented young man called Melvin. Just like the next contender in our countdown of extreme cleaners, he discovered that some chemicals can be used to clean up society when he fell into a vat of nuclear waste. Melvin became the Toxic Avenger. While poor old Melvin had problems, for one animal, life got easier when it used toxic chemicals to fight not crime, but grime. Crawling in to number three in the countdown are ants. They have a constant battle to keep clean, because most species spend a lot of time in dark damp holes in the ground, perfect breeding grounds for bacteria and fungi. That's why each and every individual becomes a real-life toxic avenger. For a start, ants groom themselves more than almost any other animal. They're constantly wiping down the hard waterproof armor of their exoskeleton. And if you take a close look at their body, you'll see a pair of glands that are loaded with some remarkable cleaning fluids. You could call it nature's very own antiseptic. To find out just how powerful the ant disinfectant is, scientists have taken extracts of the fluid and discovered that it can kill harmful yeast cells in just 10 minutes. Imagine if we kept clean like ants. It would be like having sweat that was a mixture of bleach and penicillin. However, for some people, it seems that being too clean may be bad for your health. 
There's a theory that now that we've found ways of keeping our bodies and homes germ-free, we may be weakening our immune systems. Without a steady stream of microbes and parasites to fight, a child's developing immune system may target the body's own tissues instead. This notion, called the hygiene hypothesis, arose because scientists are unable to explain why super clean developed nations are experiencing a dramatic rise in asthma and allergies. Perhaps by separating ourselves from our dirty origins, we're becoming too clean for our own good. But this hasn't stopped us from spraying chemicals all over the place. After all, it's a great way of getting rid of bugs in hard to reach places. And that's the same reason why this crow has an interest in ants. Simply stir up an ant's nest and they'll start spraying their very own pesticide. Jets of formic acid will send most predators packing, but not the crow. It's bathing in bugs, because their toxic spray helps to remove lice and other parasites. However, there is another animal that's got many more clients queuing up to be clean. At the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California, curator Sandy Troutween is rolling out the next contender in our countdown of extreme cleaners. It's an animal that starred in Finding Nemo, and just like in the movie, it really is a neat freak. This is a cleaner shrimp. It's so obsessive that it will clean anything in its tank, including Sandy's hand. set up cleaning stations on coral reefs. Fish recognize the shrimp as being a benefit to them because the shrimp will climb on board the fish and pick parasites off them. It's like having a bath underwater. A single shrimp can clean around 50 fish in an hour and they're very effective. A recent study showed that cleaner shrimps could remove 75% of the parasites on a surgeon fish in just 48 hours. It's a great system. The cleaner shrimp gets to feed on parasites and dead tissue, which helps to protect the fish from disease and infection. Which is why cleaner shrimps can boldly enter even the most ferocious mouths. But these shrimps are not the only cleaners that put their life on the line. Meet Jason Trauba from San Francisco. He needs a lot of special cleaning equipment to keep his clients happy. That's because he specializes in cleaning windows, often 30 stories above the ground. Hanging from harnesses and suction cups means that not everyone is cut out to be an extreme window cleaner. It takes a certain person when they come up on the building and look over the edge, you'll kind of know uh, if they're going to be able to do it. And there's a lot of training involved. You spend a good week with them watching every move they make because it is a, it's a life or death situation. If you fall, it's usually death. But when you know what you're doing, this job is not as dangerous as it looks. Thanks to all of Jason's safety precautions, 
This is about as risky as a cleaner shrimp entering the jaws of a moray eel. Compared to cleaning the windows of skyscrapers, getting a marine manicure from a shrimp is perfectly safe and lots of fun. Just ask this group of fifth grade students. It feels like they're tickling you and it feels really good. I like the colors, but um, they sort of feel um, weird. But not even these obsessive compulsive cleaners can compete with the animal that's number one in the countdown. We've seen the nine contenders. They're the best of the best. Only one animal is a more extreme cleaning machine. Our search for the most extreme cleaner in the countdown finishes in Japan, where animals and humans are inventing eccentric new ways to keep clean. There's the wash and walk attachable laundry tanks to solve the problems of inadequate exercise and hygiene. And who wouldn't want a hands-free hair washing machine? Or what about getting your dog to do the housework by fitting it with foot floor mops? <laughs> but not even this extreme ingenuity can compete with the inventiveness of the animal at number one in the countdown. Japan is home to the northernmost monkeys in the world, and they just love to clean. For Japanese macaques, cleaning is the social glue that binds the troop together. It's much more than just a way to remove dirt and ticks, because grooming establishes a hierarchy. Submissive animals will groom a dominant individual to show their place in the society. The Japanese macaque is number one in the countdown because cleaning is so important that occasionally they get a little carried away. Perhaps the expanse of fur on a deer is irresistible for monkeys that love to groom. But researchers have observed that one neat freak has found another use for the ticks it finds on deer. If you'd like to be groomed yourself, but you don't have any ticks of your own, you can borrow some. By adopting a deer tick, this macaque has an excuse to get his friends combing through his fur. Japanese macaques also take their obsessive cleaning habits into the kitchen. Back in 1953, researchers had been luring macaques out into the open by emptying bags of sweet potatoes onto the beach. Not surprisingly, the monkeys didn't like chewing on potatoes covered in sand so they painstakingly brush it off with their paws. And then, one day, a female discovered it was so much easier to wash the potato in water. Soon the whole troop was copying her clever cleaning behavior. Only one group of humans are more obsessive than macaques about keeping things spotless. For decades, Scientists have been working hard to find evidence of life on other planets. And, at the same time, a team of expert cleaners has been just as busy making sure that we don't accidentally spread life around the solar system. Five, four, three, two, one, engine start and liftoff of the Delta II rocket carrying the spirit from Earth to planet Mars. It's essential that our spacecraft don't have hitchhikers. According to Jason Kastner, 
supervisor of the Planetary Protection Group for the Mars missions. First of all, we want to make sure that we can study planets in their native state. Secondly, we don't want to bring along Earth bacteria or contamination, which might compromise our ability to search for life on that planet. And finally, if life does exist there already, we want to take prudent precautions to make sure that we don't bring it back and adversely affect the Earth biosphere. That's why the rover vehicles are the biologically cleanest spacecraft ever launched from Cape Canaveral, as Planetary Protection Lead Bob Kokol explains. This is an example of a, of a plate of auger. If I were just to sample this table, if I did your kitchen table at home, if I did a floor, we would expect the plate to be covered with this numbers of bacteria. And there are many hundreds of bacterial colonies on this particular plate. After we clean the hardware, and what we more typically find on a, on a spacecraft, if it was an area that we still needed to clean some more, would be a plate like this one. Now this one probably has approximately 10 bacterial colonies on it. And if we got a sample like this, which obviously is much cleaner than the first one, we would still look at that and say, you know, that's pretty good, but it's not good enough. And we would go back and do some more cleaning. What we really are always striving for is a plate like this one, and what's on this plate is absolutely no growth at all. And in fact, most of the plates that we get when we do our samples, yeah, more than 90% of our samples, in fact, we show no growth at all. So the spacecraft is actually very, very clean. Japanese macaques are also very, very clean because they get washed even more than the rover spacecraft. And it's not just a quick dip in the sea. These clever cleaners soak in a hot tub. It all started more than 30 years ago when a female macaque is thought to have watched some people relaxing in the region's thermal springs. Unlike any monkey before her, she decided to join them. Today, there are separate pools for monkeys and humans, and the whole troop has found the perfect place to keep warm and clean, even in the coldest blizzards. It's giant intellectual leaps like this that have allowed the Japanese macaque to clean up the competition. So it's no wonder that when it comes to cleaning, the Japanese macaque really is the most extreme.